Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Andrew and welcome to Andrew's Aviation. Today I'm at Houston Intercontinental Airport walking to my connecting flight to Chicago. This flight with United Airlines will be operated by an ex-Continental 737, which means that this plane is equipped with DirecTV seatback screens for some quality entertainment. Also, this flight will be very empty, so we can expect to spread out and have a good time. So, enough with the intro. Let's jump in and head to the gate. All right, guys, I found it, and it's getting pretty late. This is definitely a tight connection, but we made it here on time. Here we are at gate Charlie 6, where our 737-800 is waiting to take us to Chicago. This aircraft, registered as November 33264, was delivered to Continental Airlines in August 2001 and acquired by United in November 2011 after the merger of both companies. It's just over 18 years old at the time of the flight and powered by two CFM-56 engines. Right after I finished taking pictures of the plane, boarding began and went pretty normally. Except the nice part was that there weren't many people in line to have to wait for. Like you know those times where you have to wait a long time for everyone else to board the plane before it's your group's turn, and you just stand there wishing you would have spent the extra thousand dollars for a first class ticket? Yeah, that didn't happen this time. Some of the passengers on our flight today were upgraded to first class, so as you guys can see, it's very empty back in economy. I'd say in total there's max 20 people on this flight. The reason I think this plane is so empty is that I heard a couple of flights got cancelled earlier, and because of that, we ended up missing a lot of people. But for the rest of us, that leaves rows and rows of empty seats for us all to spread out on. Here's my view from seat 29F, and let's look around the actual seat a bit before it gets too dark to see anything in detail. So of course the first thing that everyone notices is the big seat back screen, but we'll explore that a little later. Below that is the place where the in-flight magazine and safety information cards live in isolation. And fun fact, this is the first time a human has touched the magazine since it was put in a month ago. Continuing downward is the usual large single folding tray table, and the tiny seat back pocket which I never realized was such a privilege until I flew Scoot Airlines. This aircraft also doesn't have any power outlets, so make sure you board with your electronics charged if you need to get some work done. The legroom for these seats is pretty typical for your standard 737-800, with United offering 30 inches of pitch, around 17 inches of width, and 2 inches of recline. Also on these seats are an adjustable headrest with United's signature blue pattern and a little remote control that has been fused into the armrest. Just like United's 777-200 domestic fleet that has controls on the armrest, it's great to have these controls, but I can see some flaws with the design. I honestly can't stop thinking what would happen if someone fell asleep watching something while their arm was resting on the controls and they accidentally turned the volume all the way up and it scared them awake. Or if you wanted to change your channel but accidentally changed your seatmate's TV by mistake right when they were in the middle of the climax moments of the B-movie. These things are probably unlikely to happen, but it would still be annoying, and kind of funny, if they did. Other than all that, the seat is decently clean, comfortable, and on this flight, very roomy. A couple minutes later, United played their Spider-Man themed safety presentation and we taxied out to runway 15 right for departure. Quite the beautiful midnight views outside if you ask me, but above 10,000 feet, the only views that matter are what's directly in front of us on the in-flight entertainment screen. So the story behind these unique screens is that United inherited the DirecTV service from Continental Airlines in 2010 when the two airlines merged. You used to have to pay to use these TVs in economy, hence the credit card swipe I showed earlier, 
but since January 30th, 2019, the service is free to all passengers. As for how this DirecTV stuff works, it's exactly like your home conventional TV. If you have DirecTV, that is. You can tune into any station you choose and watch whatever kind of movies and TV shows you want. As long as it's on. Yeah, the downside to the broadcasting service is you can't always find the exact content you want to watch, and if you do end up finding it, you can't always start from the beginning. I get this really isn't a problem for TV shows or sports games, but for movies, it can be weird to jump on board the story train right in the middle of the action. Even though a lot of people have their own streaming devices, this service is still great for live shows and sports though, because you can tune in without needing Wi-Fi or a charged battery. In the end, I'm so glad this service is free. Not just because I'm cheap, but because if you were hypothetically traveling with a family, it would really suck to have to pay up to $8 per kid just so they can watch Spongebob for a few hours. So since I had three seats all to myself, I realized it would have been a crime to not try and watch three programs at once just because I can. Of course all that shifting in focus is using up a lot of energy between the two brain cells I have left at this hour, which means it's time for a snack. When the crew came back around with the goodie cart, I replenished myself with a refreshing can of acidic brown carbonated sweet water and a classic airline snack of salted pretzels. I know, it's not gourmet or anything, but it's late right now and I'll take any free carbs I can get. That also includes eating an entire giant cookie that I brought from home. I'm gonna regret eating that later, but at least I'm still awake enough to keep watching Toy Story 4 on three different screens. So here's the restrooms on the 737. The only note I wanted to make is that the restroom is very clean and in good condition. A good hour and a few Family Feud episodes later, we began our pitch black descent into Chicago, which means it's time for the flight analysis where I'll be grading United on the experience of this flight from a list of criteria. So to start off, the atmosphere of this flight was nice, since we all had room to spread out our bags and our bodies, and everyone including the crew was in a calming mood. The grub was pretty typical for a US flight, and the availability of the provided seatback entertainment and Wi-Fi for purchase was nice too. Not the best out there, but much better than having nothing. This plane was very clean all around, and the crew were very nice and attentive, and I even had a short conversation with a few of them. The value of this flight was about what I consider normal. It was nice to be on a full service carrier with entertainment, snacks, and carry-on bags included, but this ticket was a little more expensive than some of the best rates between Houston and Chicago. Overall, United scored pretty good for a short flight on a US legacy carrier, about what I consider slightly above normal. Even though nothing really exciting happened on this flight, it was still a nice, quiet, peaceful flight where everyone got to spread out and relax. And sometimes those flights are just as important, especially late at night where everyone's tired and needs to get home. Although I didn't sleep myself, it's still cool to use the free provided in-flight entertainment and I'm so glad that United is keeping their DirecTV service on their inherited Continental 737s. But of course, that's just my thoughts and opinions. What do you guys think of United's and Continental's DirecTV entertainment? Have you ever been on a red-eye flight or an empty flight and would like to share your experiences? Please feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Well that's it for me today. It's really late and I'm beyond tired at this point. I can't wait to get home and climb into my bed. If you like this video, pound that like button and subscribe to Andrews Aviation for some more dank videos. And as always, stay safe and have a wonderful day everyone.